Hello everyone, Fixer here. So, Tail in the Desert has reset once again and Tail 10 has begun from scratch. I streamed the first couple hours of the launch and uh, you'll be able to see it all here. It's edited down a bit to remove some unrelated topics, uh, but the full VOD will be linked below. It'll be on Twitch. I'll display timestamps up on the screen, but uh, also I'll put links down in the description below in case you want to quickly jump ahead to a specific topic. This will include uh, various interviews I did with a few players, including one from Apophis from the dev team. And a couple things to keep in mind, please. This was a stream, so I talked to Chad a bit, but also I was sick during this and it gets worse as time goes on. And it's pretty evident in the silly mistakes I make and other cognitive blunders. Anyways, a bunch of links will be down below for resources and uh, other videos that may help you on your journey in Egypt. Thank you and good luck in Tale 10. So I um I didn't play a whole lot of of Tale Nine. Um, I don't know when I stopped playing. My problem with Tale, and it's always been this way, and I started playing in like Alpha, like pre Tale One Alpha, is I rather enjoy the game. I play it a lot, and I definitely burn myself out. It's inevitable. It always happens. I can't avoid it. I've tried so many Tales to just be like chill. And then stuff comes out, I'm like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want a glass blow. Oh, I want to do beetles. Oh, I want to do that. And I get carried away with myself every time. I can't help it. Um, I don't I don't plan on staying for long in Tale 10. Um, in fact, I don't even know if I'm going to play after today. But I definitely wanted to play Welcome Island. Get stuff on video so new players can take a look, see if they like the game. Perhaps give it a shot. Things like that. I always want to pitch in and help with that. Help keep the game alive, you know? It always needs fresh blood. There's lots and lots of vets in this game. And they're awesome. It's a, it's a pretty great community, to be honest. There's lots of nice people in this community. But it still needs fresh blood. It needs new people. And I've always, I've always tried pushing for that. Played at the start of Tale 9, but pretty overwhelming for any solo players trying to figure out what they need to focus on to play competitively um yeah so playing this game solo it's possible the what you need to do is you need to be able to regulate yourself you need to be able to pick and choose what you want to focus on because there's so many things to do in in this game that if you try to do them all it's overwhelming and and you'll start to burn out and and you'll give up it's it happens to a lot of people, I think. It's happened to me. Because I enjoy so many different aspects of this game. I love the devs of this game. There's so many people dedicated to keeping this game alive. Anyways, what I was going to say is, this art, this may not be the best art. It's being halfway covered. This is the, the new art for Tail Tent, and I love it. I think this is fantastic. This is the best art I think we've had so far to advertise the game. I like it. I don't know if, if Mallard had it custom done. Um, I know his wife does art. I don't know if she did it. I don't know what, but I think it looks fantastic. It's really nice. I'm so confused. I thought the game was out forever ago. Oh, yes. So what happened? This game came out, I think, is 2003. And it was in alpha for a couple years before that. I don't remember exactly what year. So the game has a beginning and an end. And that, that beginning and end can vary. Sometimes it's a few years, sometimes it's just one year. And when it ends, the game resets. Some of the rules change. Um, some of the things get updated. New text, new this, new that. And the game relaunches. And it keeps the game fresh. It's one of the things that makes the game unique. And I think it's one of the reasons why the game is still alive today, is that reset. Um, I don't think it would be the same game if it never reset. I think it would be a dead game, personally. Um, I spent an awful lot of time looking for royalty-free Egyptian music, and it, it pretty much doesn't exist. Um, at all. Uh, and I, I'm telling you, I probably spent 20 to 30 hours looking for Egyptian royalty-free music. So, um, I, I've settled on... Uh-oh. So yeah, royalty-free Egyptian music, too hard to find. I can't find it anywhere. So, I did find, um... A whole bunch of royalty free arabic music it's turkish though and that's what you're hearing right now so that's what uh that's what i tend to play with this with this game 
All right, I'm going to pop up the trailer. I made this a couple years ago. I was really happy with this trailer when I made it. I spent a lot of time on it. Um, I enjoyed it. It was fun to make, and I think it does a decent job. But over time, you know, you get critical of your past work, and I think I could have made it a lot better than it is. But, you know, it's good enough. Oh, my God, where is it? Is this it here? It is. All right, hold on. This is the trailer for the game that I made two years ago. Okay, so we're still waiting on the game to get patched so I can get in. But until then, um, I want to talk about the, the trailer a little bit. So like I said, um, this was two years ago, and I'm pretty critical of this trailer, to be honest. Um, I like it. It's better than, than what the tale has had, like, ever. There has a, there's, there was uh, two trailers, three trailers, something like that, like, like we're talking early 2000s. They're not good at all. Um, so this is at least decent. That at least gets a point across. What I like about it is I did cover a lot of different visuals. I was able to capture a lot of different types of things that, like, you view this, you're like, oh, look at there's vines and what the hell is this? You grow stuff. There's ranching cows everywhere. There's a field. So I feel like I, I captured a lot of different variety of things to do. And, and I really like that. What I don't like, I didn't like the how the transitions turned out with the um, with the text on the screen. It w I also don't like the water. That's a bad shot. I don't know why I put that in there. Ugh. The water at the, the the water at certain angles can look pretty bad. I think I should have left that out. But the transitions for the for the the the, the nameplates, I feel like could have been cleaner. I feel like I could have got a better shot on these beetles. I could have left this one out. I mean, yeah, sure you can move that rod on the gears but I, you know who knows what the hell that is i should have left that out i the, the trailer should have been shorter i think trailer is good you do good work oh thanks tiz i like that shot though the, the one near the end with the lightning fantastic and i needed a firework shot i think that firework shot was from a few tales ago i had to pull that one out of my archives i think I like that one. I like the. I really wanted to get a lot of the art stuff in there because because that's super cool. Let's see. Mosaics, yeah, that's a good shot. I like I like getting other people's art in there. Stop being critical. The trailer came out great. I feel like this is an interesting game to do a trailer for. It was it's so hard. So what what I did was when I when I prepared for this trailer, um, I actually, um, 
sent an email to um what's his name oh my god how come Derek Liu so Derek Liu is um a guy who does trailers for the gaming industry he made the trailer for um Alex for Valve and he's made lots of other trailers like the Firewatch trailer that's famous he's done a lot of really popular trailers he's he's really good at it so I sent him an email and I'm like how do you do this with an old game I'm showing I'm making a trailer for a game made in 2003 it looks like it's made in 2003 and it's very heavy on the UI and the menus very heavy which is something you generally don't want to show too much in trailers. And I'm like, this this seems like a very difficult task to make a compelling trailer when you have all these limitations. And and he just, he didn't give me a ton of advice. All he really said was, look, don't apologize for the game. If the game looks old, there's nothing you can do about it. Don't apologize for it. Just put forth what the game can do and and focus on that and not apologizing for the game. And that's kind of what I did here. That's what I tried to focus on. So yeah, I got advice. I got advice on how to handle that. And I focused on that. I, I think it turned out well, but like I said, if I went back and, and redid it, and I, and I probably will make another trailer at some point, I've talked with Mallard a little bit about it, but he's a busy fella, you know? And um, one day I'd like to make a new trailer. All right, so like I said, the, Previous client, you couldn't connect directly into with OBS. You couldn't hook into it. So you had to use like a display capture or a window capture. And that is what caused the jittery. L look, there's no jitteriness. I'm, I'm hooking right into the game. Okay, that's amazing. All right, so what's going on? What do we have here? I'm already falling behind. Gathering slate? Yeah. It's looking good. My music stopped though. Why did my music stop? What the heck? Here we go. Alright, so we are starting Tale in the Desert, Tale 10. I don't know a whole lot about what's changed in this tale. Oh gosh, I need to change the colors here. I don't know a whole lot about what's changed. I don't think I'm going to stay very long. I want to do Welcome Island. I want to find out, you know, what's different here at least. And I want to talk to some other players to see what they're expecting for the tale. Where is... Where is the option to change the colors the color of the grass i think there's an option right at least there used to be are those somewhere else now no that's disciplines skills skills window i don't know where that would be maybe it's on me personally what? I think the graphic options are locked until you can get to mainland. What? I'm gonna look like this normal guy now? Oh my god. Alright. First thing we need to do is gather slate. Two pieces in your inventory, click on yourself, then your skills menu to nap a slate blade. Yeah. Alright, so once I get, get going here, I'm gonna bring probably Brad in here first and just chat for five minutes or so. I need to get used to the controls. Gabriel Knight has discovered Egypt. Oh, is he the first one off the island? That was quick. Holy cow. A large... Okay. Oh, that's right. I remember they added that last tale. To make it a little easier on you, you get like a, a nice stash of slate early on. Find information about items you have here. Okay, I don't need that. Skills window. Napping level two. Am 
my tasks. Disciplines window, you can reopen it. The disciplines window by clicking this button or by pressing the G key. Yeah. Notifications, I don't need that. There's the calendar. Get rid of all these notifications. All right. Napa Slate Blade. Which I wasn't paying attention to, was I? That used to be something you dug up. Or I'm sorry, you got by clicking on yourself. Right click the slate in your inventory? Are you serious right now? I wasn't paying attention, was I? That is strange. Not used to that. Okay. Cool. We got a slate blade. Okay, I can dig it. That's gonna take some getting used to, right? We've been clicking on ourselves for how many years? Now right click the ground and be amazed. Build a brick mold or a wood plane. That will make things easier. I like that. All right, let's get away from people, first of all. Look at all these camels. We need a place with lots of grass. I suppose I could always go out there. All right, so what do we want here? Gather wood from a tree? Oh, we haven't really done that, have we? No stuttering? Is the, is the stream looking good? Gather wood. You can left click on every object in the world. This will show a menu containing some information about that object and actions you are currently able to perform on it. You can right click on an object to see some options. Building things. I think that's exactly what you just told me. Yeah, it's gonna take some getting used to, but I can dig it. I can dig it. Of course, everybody's getting wood right now. I think they do like shorten the refresh rates on the wood, but still, when you get all these people here, it's a lot of people. Let's go over here. This does seem like a lot better than the old menus. I can dig it. I can dig it. It's just gonna take getting used to, you know? We've been doing it one way for so many years, and now there's a new way. Does it say how much I have? There we go. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds is a long time with this many people on here. I do get a little bit of lag when I zoom out. I think probably because of all the names. tend to play is I'll click myself going places and I'll use right click to stop myself. I, I get the feeling a lot of people play it that way. Let's go over here. Oh nope, there's someone over there. And so this is going to cause cause me like to stop. It's going to cause me to pop up these little pop-ups everywhere. I'll have to get used to that. I got a little bit of wood. Where do I want to sit up? Place that's not too packed. Oh my god. They're all too packed. I think that pressing escape stops you running. Uh, I don't know if that's something I can get at the hang of unless you can change it to a different key because I generally don't have my hand over there generally could maybe set up right here well that might be too close I don't know See, I almost did it. I'm gonna accidentally build stuff. I know it. 
I'm gonna have to get used to it. Open widget, you can use this window to move and rotate a building. Oh, I did do it. I just didn't see it. I don't remember how much wood and stuff that you need. I I've forgotten a lot of stuff. Let's just put it that way. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to bring someone in here in a minute. Let's see if Brad is available. Um, Can I build here? I think so. Nope, not interface. There we go. Yeah, I might have to play with the sound. I think I have to use my mixer to change it up. See how loud that is? Holy cow. Oh, Brad's in chat. All right, hold on one second. When the, when, when my cursor is off screen, the, the camera's going to spin a little bit. Can't do much about that. Sorry, guys. All right. So let's grab Brad in here. Uno momento. Actually, he can come in all on his own. I would think. Hop in, Brad, when you get a moment. Gathering grass. Oh, that's right. I can gather grass now. Hello? Hey, Fixer. Hey, what's going on? Not a lot. How are you? Doing okay. I'm going to turn you down a little bit. All right, now say something. Hey, can you hear me? Yep, yep, yep. So what's going on? Oh, you know, tail in the desert. Good so times. Brad, Brad's responsible for setting this all up for me. Give me a channel in the Discord so I can talk to people and all that stuff. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. So the idea today is I'm going to grab a few players here and there. Brad going to be the first. And we're going to just talk about Tale of the Desert a little bit. Talk about his history with the game. What he's hoping to do in Tale 10 and all that stuff. All that jazz. Brad yelling at all of us. Yep, yep, yep. What was, uh, what was your first Tale? Uh, I started about halfway through Tale 8. Tale 8. And I played through Tale. I think, if I remember correctly, you probably came in like right after I stopped playing Tale 8. It sounds about right. Yeah. And you played every tale since? Yeah, I've been here since then. I mean, it's just tale nine and then this one. Yeah. Have you had yeah, a favorite it's... tale yet? Uh, tale nine was pretty awesome. Uh, getting to start at the beginning was definitely a nice experience. Uh, the launches for this game are fantastic. So you got to click on grass and drop. Oh my god, that's so different. Big piles take longer. Okay, I like that. Uh, it's. Are you used to that yet? Being able to click on your inventory and, and do stuff with it. That is pretty weird. It's cool, but it's very different. Grabbing more wood. All right. So um, you also, you also do stuff with the wiki, right? With the ATITD wiki. Yeah. I run the wiki. It's very exciting. Although <laughs> Omega Ice has borderline taken over the wiki, this tale. Yeah. He's doing a lot of really cool stuff. The wiki's uh, it's really important for this game. It's it's like the backbone of this game, to be honest. Yeah, I I it would be hard to not play with the wiki. Mallard wants to make it so that it's not as necessary, but it's just the game is so dense um i think he's i think he's made improvements uh um, oh for sure the, the task list helps uh oh talents find information on your attributes here why is a guy call me a peasant what's up with that so carpenter farmer laborer lumberjack potter and weaver I have no talent points. I'm not a very talented person, I guess. I think you get your first one when you leave the island. Ah. 
So those were called specializations last tale as well, right? Correct. Right. And you'll unlock plenty more as you uh, get new skills and techs and stuff too. Right. Can I click? On oh, you can click on it. All right. Increased focus, increased endurance, and increased speed. An ancient blade work. What the hell? So this is a little different. What are all these different things? I guess they're different specialties within Carpenter? Okay. Super neat. So, um, what are you planning on focus on in Tale 10? I'm not sure yet. I'm not going to have as much time this tale, but uh, I think I want to try a little bit of everything. Last time, uh, I, I just, I kind of got hyper-focused on certain things like uh, fishing, and I did a bunch of wine last time. Wine's cool. Wine's fun. I, I don't really have the patience for blacksmithing, but I feel like I need to learn it just so that I can say that I did. I've, I've done a little bit of blacksmithing. It can be it can be kind of hard for some people. I, it's hard for me anyways to to get like the perfect blade cuts and whatnot. I was never very good at it is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot of skill and patience. Luckily, there are some pretty awesome blacksmiths in Egypt, and they are super friendly about sharing their skills. It's awesome. Like, I know yep. uh, Styx and uh, Adrian Conrad, off the top of my head, are really good at it and are love streaming and helping people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was, um in early Tales at least, that was a pretty valuable skill being able to make nice blades yeah for sure if you get those high quality hatchets and increase your wood by like two three four times all right so let's see building a brick mold all right it would be nice if you would be able to build a brick mold right next to the other it doesn't look like it's easy to do still got to use the arrows on the little build menu one nice thing about those is that they just break instead of crumbling into nothing so you can fix them now and you don't have to uh, replace them every time oh that's nice yeah I'm down with that for sure yeah, they did lots and lots of little quality of life improvements like that out of wood already no what happened oh did my blade break no, it just was a lag. I got hyped for the game about a month ago, and with not much to do until 9, I just decided to go ham on the wiki. Ah. The guy said he went ham on the wiki. So do you have, um, do you have any kind of, like, specialty guilds, or do you have, like, um... Kind of like an open guild that uh, new players can join. Are you playing anything like that this tale? Um, well, I'm going to be up in Meshwash this time, uh, which is a change from Kush, where I've usually been. And I'm going to be playing with the uh, the Something Awful goons that some people may know from other games. And uh, they're just sort of a general guild, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Eugenius or somebody will also have like a fishing guild. I'll probably join that. So for those of, you, uh, those of you new to the game, there's a lot of specialty guilds in this for just about every single facet of the game, I would say. At least eventually. I think I'll probably join uh, a cooking guild again as well. Uh, it's always fun to do the help doing the testing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing it looks like I'm I'm struggling with is left clicking versus right clicking on things. Something to get used to. What am I waiting for? What am I doing here? Make bricks using brick mode. Oh, okay. So I'm not really um, trying to speed run my way over into the mainland. I'm just kind of chilling here, taking it a little bit slowly, I think.
So are you still not sure if you're going to stick with the game too long term? No, I don't know. So I, I wasn't going to do Welcome Island um, at all until pretty much I decided yesterday. I'm like, yeah, I think I'll do it. Um, I don't know. Started thinking about it midday. I think you messaged me or something like that, right? Yeah. And, and by nighttime, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll do that. So I was thinking about it, like, well, I've already got, like, I think I got a Welcome Island video for Tale 8, and I think I got one for Tale 9. I'm like, well, what's adding a third one going to do for anybody? And that's why I'm like, well, maybe I'll, I'll chat with some people and see what they want to do this tale. It's definitely one of those games that's sort of like Factorio or something, where it's just a mind-numbing repetition that some people love and crave for some reason. But it just sucks you in so hard. Yeah, yeah, the, it does have a grindy aspect. After all, it's it's an MMO, and I hear I hear research might be a little Factorio esque or maybe Rimworld esque, perhaps. We're not sure, but they teased right before launch. Um, there's going to be the concept of laboratories that houses can build to aid in research somehow. Sounds like. If that is the case, it sounds like you would perhaps deposit your research or you would perhaps perhaps create something like a, a research um, unit of some sort. I don't know. And then contribute that to the overall research. Do you, do you know if it's if it's based on factions as tale or is it like an overall group effort? We don't know yet. Mallard's been playing it pretty close to the vest. Oh, well, you can do the flax seeds just by clicking the ground as well. Oh, no, that's searching for flax seeds. Wait a minute. Got it. Yeah, just going to take some getting used to with this flax. I do I do really like the, the streamlining he's done with Welcome Island over the past few tales since he got a hold of it. With, with the help of the slate and with getting the flax seeds easier and I don't know I, I feel like it's it's a, a much better experience for new players risk of time guys Julia says is the library thing confirmed or just a discord fever dream I think that's confirmed right yeah it's uh it's on the desert nomad site we don't know how it works yet, but it's it's teased there. Right. All right, so I'm just grabbing some seeds, guys. I'm not going to pull these yet. Does it take longer for these? Oh, there it goes. I felt like it took longer for the seeds to go wild. I have, even though I haven't played in what, what is it, two years or whatever, I still have the muscle memory to click on myself to do things. It's going to be weird getting used to that. My guy says, don't mass produce too much flax. Game gives you a chunk of rotten flax once you, oh, oh, that's right. It did that last tail too, didn't it? I forgot about that. So this tale is supposed to be a, a year long. Is that right? Yeah, 12 months. We'll see no, if it actually ends in 12 months. Yeah, I was about to say, that. Is that how concrete is that? As concrete as it ever is. So is, do you know if that's the plan moving forward, like um, having shorter tails with um, maybe more firm endings or is that, I don't I remember a tail being planned for 12 months, has it? No, I think this is the shortest one, at least the shortest intention. And I think that he wants to keep it that way. For tail 11 and so on. Uh oh. 
that that would that might help a lot for like the survivability of the game since i i'm assuming the game's much more profitable in the first few months since everybody likes the launch oh for sure and if it drags on too long people begin to lose interest it's I don't know. It, it's it's got to be a hard thing to juggle. I know it would drive me crazy making those decisions. I forgot about my hotkeys. Yeah, jumping in mid tail is just meh. So, um, I've I don't think I've ever jumped in mid tail. Um, Billy said that jumping in mid tail is kind of meh, and I can see how that might be. It it would probably be like um, you probably have like a significant like fear of missing out type feeling, since everybody is so far along and and you feel like you might have to play catch up. When I joined mid tail eight, I didn't feel the, the the FOMO and like feeling like I was behind as much because I I, I think that comes a lot with uh, the beginning and you realize what you're missing. Oh, uh, for me, I was just super overwhelmed and like, oh my god, I can do all of these things. That's a good point. It might be something more uh, veterans may feel because they know what they're fit missing out on. The rat race. Yeah, for me, just the the sheer number of options of all the different things that you can do in the game was crazy. It was. It took me a while to even figure out what I wanted to work on. Right, and and it can get overwhelming. Some analysis paralysis when you have all these different things, and you don't know what to focus on. kind of a good problem to have though to an extent oh, yeah too much content all right rotting flax now um flax green completes can i get rid of that guess not oh thorns that's right Everything's got thorns on this island, right? If I remember correctly. Well, that's a lot of thorns. Oh, we can build small distaffs right out the bat. Oh, they shortened the time it takes to rot flax. That was really quick. Caution! You can use this, but it in, uh, but it, it but it, in Egypt, buildings are permanent. Got a typo right there on the rotten flax bundles. I think a lot of that was helped uh, by removing bubbles from the game. Oh, that's you. The whole sense progress is missing because you have the public works like everywhere. And all the research is already done, and you have to get very far in the game to be useful. Oh, you mean by, um, or she means by, uh, jumping in mid-game. Yeah, I can see that. You do, do, you do kind of get to speed run that a little bit, and you don't get to enjoy it. But, yeah, you know, when the next, uh, tail comes along, you kind of, um, if you're new to the game, you do get a little bit of head start by jumping in mid-tail. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, what I was, my comment was in response to that, where it's uh, with the levels being gone, there's not quite as much of that like bottleneck there for newer players starting mid tail. Um, there's still you have to level up skills and everything, but it's not nearly as bad as it was in Tail Eight. It's gonna be, it's gonna feel weird not having levels. All right, so what do we need? Oh, we're, we're already on to distaff. All right, let's build this distaff then. 
Need lots of bricks, people. Lots of bricks. Okay, Brad, I'm gonna holler at somebody else to get in here. I'm gonna chit chat with them for a little bit, but thank awesome. you for stopping by. Thanks for everything you do, man. Yeah, absolutely. You too. All right, we'll see ya. All right, I'm gonna grab someone else to get in here. Fluffy Bunny, I said what they wanted. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Brad's right here next to me. I didn't realize that. I need more bricks. Was it a hundred bricks? Yeah, I got a lot of bricks to make. Fluffy's not answering. Southern Pretzel, what's going on? Is Fluffy, Fluffy Bunny in Twitch chat? Are you there, Fluffy? Fluffy Bunny has gone away. Oh, what am I missing? Straw? I have straw. I need more mud. Okay. All right, anybody in Twitch chat want to do a little interview? Five, ten minutes, maybe? And, um, mud. I need mud. And talk about your experience with Tail, what's coming up in Tail 10 and all that stuff. Any volunteers? Uh, uh, you need to have a, a, a decent mic. Doesn't have to be pristine, but I don't want to kill everybody. Also, bear me with me a little bit. Kind of out of it. I started to get real sick about a half hour before the stream. I had my vaccine a few days ago and my immune system not terribly happy about it so i'm working i'm asking in discord chat there we go should be a lot of people getting what is um what's taking everyone so long to get to egypt how did gabriel Knight do it so quickly halfway there on the bricks. Do I need to drop more grass? I need to pick more grass, I think. Well, I totally forgot how slow the distaffs are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're a little bit slow. In fact, isn't that what takes the longest on Welcome Island? Something like that? Oh, my brick rack fell apart. Pick up the bricks. Brad! You said that it doesn't do that, Brad. What happened? Oh, no. Let's make another one. Is that not in yet? It might not be in yet. It's a bug? Oh no. Okay. Where is Soulcun? Finally home! Someone parked their massive work van right on the bridge into the village. I had to call the police. It's completely blocking a lane. In the sidewalk, going to cause a massive accident. Guys, probably. That sounds like a uh, sounds like a weird problem to have. This is blocking a bridge. 
What's up, Coyote? Oh, oh, oh. I gotta drop it here. How much rotten flax did they give me? 50? Okay. Thinks peacefulness would be interesting as a world builder GM. Alright, so those of you in chat who are playing in the till, till I can get someone else in here. Um, what are you guys planning on specializing this till? Focusing on anything? Blacksmithing? Wine? Beer? What you guys doing? This sounds super Eastern European or Russian. It's Turkish. So, um, I don't know if you were here at the be very beginning of the stream. I talked about it a little bit. Um... Got to use royalty-free music, right? I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to deal with problems. Um, so need royalty-free music, and there's like no Egyptian royalty-free music at all. There's none. There's zero. I've spent hours and hours looking for it, and it doesn't exist. Um, so I'm like, well, okay, if if not Egyptian, then at least Arabic. And so I found this group here that does royalty-free music. They are called, what is it? Turku. This is, this album is called Nomads of the Silk Road. And it's Turkish, it's not Egyptian. But this is all I got, this is it. We had to walk in the road with the kids and all the groceries, stupidly dangerous. Jeez. Wait, what am I missing? More boards? All right, let's do some more boards. Doesn't look like many people want to be interviewed. I overestimated how uh, excited people would be. Or maybe underestimated. They're too busy on Welcoming Island. Looks like there's a marker for Ancient Egypt Power Metal. It needs to be something that isn't going to drive people crazy listening to it in a chill stream. But you may be right. I would have, but I freeze up on streams, ramble, and say dumb stuff. Yeah, I do that sometimes too. Howdy, I'm probably going to play around with cooking beer, wine, that sort of stuff. You think? Cooking? There's so much with cooking, right? I mean, there's so much with beer and wine too. There's a lot to do. I always like, I always like the wine. I've always found the wine fun. Um. Oh, 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 soul coin. Hold on, I think I got somebody. Soul Kun, which I believe is also streaming the game. I think, perhaps. I'm Kirby, perhaps? Give me a second, guys. I watch the sun rise over the Nile while I harvest my flax. Meaningful metal fist gesture. Why not? After all, for the for the um, old MLG Pro um, Picker video, I did find some sort of Egyptian dubstep for that. Although it was not royalty free. So, it's got ads on it, but they're not my ads. They're the guy who made it. He's got ads on it. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. What's going on? Oh, uh, gathering, gathering flax, you know. <laughs> sure. We're about to journey to Egypt. I believe. But we're waiting on rope. <laughs> oh, mine's stuff. All right, so I'm here with I'm Kirby. Say hello. Hello. What's your name in game? Uh, I'm Kirby. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never met you before. Nice to meet you. 
Nice to meet you. And Solkun? Uh, I go by Mugen in game. Uh oh, you go by who? I go by Mugen. Turn you up a little bit there. Nope. So, um, you guys are playing till uh, 10 together? Yeah. Yeah, certainly, yeah. Yeah, we, we fiddled around in tail 9. Uh, we were like, oh, we'll actually get on tail 10 when it comes in. Yeah, we, we... Was it like October time we played last year? Yeah, it was, it was a while ago, yeah. Yeah, but, uh... Playing that one, and then we figured, yeah, it'd be good to jump in once it starts to whack up. Was was Tail Nine your your first jump into the game? Uh, um, no. Well, what was your first Tail? Me, me, yes, but not good. Ah. <laughs> no, I it's I struggle to remember it. I'm not sure if it was like Tail Two or Three or something like that. Maybe Four. Um, it was a while ago. Um, when I was a younger kid, but playing on dial up, but the game didn't run that well, so. I sort of didn't last long in it. Tail, uh, that's, yeah, that was a long time ago. Tail 3 was my favorite. Tail, I really enjoyed it. That was, that was so long ago. I don't, what was it, 2006 <laughs> or something? That sounds about right, yeah. Six or seven. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it, was a way, it was a ways back. Yeah. All right, Why I'm just now... Just now getting my just staff going, oh my gosh. Uh, I've We're, got uh, all broke. Our cards our cards are loaded. We did it. Yeah, <laughs> oh don't don't forget to uh dismantle. Oh you guys are already in Egypt? We're about to We're be. About, We're about to leave. <laughs> so is did they turn the the notifications off? I see Gabriel Knight has discovered Egypt. And I'm guessing seen... he was the first one and that'd be the achievement. Is my guess. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I imagine he was first. Yeah. Good on him. <laughs> mm. So especially with all, especially with the problems. I got someone asked me why is this one called Temptation. I don't. I don't think I know why. No one knows why yet, do they? I don't no. think anyone's figured it out yet. No. It's um. Was it, there it, like it a Temptation a system, or something, or? If it's if it's the theme of of you know the stranger coming in and tempting us to do stupid stuff, I think. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but maybe, maybe. That's pretty much every tale. We do stupid stuff on behalf of the stranger all the time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's how it goes all the time. It's nice to actually see it with players because we were on the tail end of tail tail nine and there was not really many people left playing. But this yeah, is just it, crazy. It could kind of taper off at the end of Tales a little bit. It wasn't always that way, but the game's been around a long time. Yeah, that's fair. So you guys, uh, you decided a faction yet? Uh, we're Meshwash. Oh, yeah. hence why you jumped in the Meshwash channel. That makes sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, All right, do we... Yeah, I think we go Let's now. make yeah. the journey. Head for yeah. Egypt. Yeah. Good luck. So, um, oh. what are you guys planning on, like, focusing on until then? Ooh. Not really sure okay. yet. There we go. Select match wish. Okay. Um, yeah, I I think personally for me, I want to sort of just help with the community at least and start to grow with that, I guess. Definitely. Um, definitely see what, what needs helping with, for one thing. But as for actual specialization, yeah, we haven't really looked too far into it yet. Um, is, it, is there like a public guild that Meshwish has planned? I assume? Um, I don't know. There hasn't really been much discussion yet for Meshwish. Um, pretty much prior to launch, it was all just, you know, just idle chatter and everything, and now the game's been up just only an hour and a half. So it's, um, it's, it's very early days. Yeah, the public guilds usually they they tend to be inevitable. Um, they're very nice for welcoming new players, usually, or or even solo players. They can be very helpful. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go. That might yeah, be worth looking into then. Yeah, that's definitely something worth looking into. Yeah, if uh, generally if you can get some 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 people will, will specialize in certain things and they'll get like a, a certain 
building or whatever a machine up quickly in public and get people access to technology a lot quicker than they normally have it's uh it's it's really nice to have for sure yeah definitely definitely we'll see how it all see how it all ends up panning out I'm really mm. really excited though now that now that i'm not uh, i was i was crashing considerably to begin with but they seem to have fixed that really quickly which is good yeah uh i was too apparently it was it was a a, a character in somebody's name oh uh, oh was it schrodinger was, yeah oh, was, it was at the umlaut in the name yeah 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 that's what it sounded oh. like to me oh if, if that was legit then geez that's that's an interesting thing to cause a crash Someone puts an umlaut in their name and the whole game craps itself. Jeez. Brad says he believes Affable Evil is planning to pitch a big time on public works for Meshwish. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Affable Sorry. Evil. Sorry. I think the uh, more interesting one is where did you end up, Megan? It's uh, uh, a good question. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. You guys may spawn separate places from each other. Oh, we definitely have. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, is there a map? Yeah, there is. Hit M. Oh, there it is. Yep. M. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in pretty much dead center of the map. I'm right, right on the mesh wish right delta. I've so when when the the game first started, I I first played in alpha before tail one happened, and oh, although he, he had the full map of Egypt, it only in like the alpha tests. It was only like the Nile Delta and some of the areas up there that you could play and you couldn't play anywhere else. So the, the, I've, the Nile Delta has always had like a special place in my nostalgic heart. Mm hmm. It does seem like a nice area anyway. Um, it is. It is. I like it. Yeah. Tiz says the nameplates didn't support the character. So when the clients encountered it, unha uh, the unhandled exception crash happened. Ah, okay. Makes oh. sense. So, but why why didn't I crash that? <laughs> like maybe you didn't see them. Possibly. Would have been yeah. If, if if yeah, I think you must I've, not have seen the nameplate. It's the new. I think mm. it's the new client versus the old client. I didn't. I think right. it was not a pri a problem on the old client. Yeah, I'm still got the old client. That also would probably be it. Wait, right. I can already build a cart. Okay, that was a lot quicker. I thought it was going to take a lot longer. Yeah, not you just. Just get right on it. Once you get that going, yeah. Nice meet. So, we've got to meet up. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find a way. Um, if you like, look at the map. Yeah. Um, I... Oh. Like 1, I think I made a mistake. I didn't build oh, my oh. cart yet. Oh. He didn't hit build. I hit build. I forgot that you have to build a cart and put stuff in it. I just made a big mistake. All right, well, I guess I'll be here for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> make all that Could you dismantle it and get the parts back? Or? Get, uh... No, I started tearing down my stuff before I built the cart. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because you need to get get, get that... Um, you need five rope to put in the cart, too. So get, get that spinning straight up. Definitely. <laughs> All right, so I'm at 1,006. How are you getting? Uh, in the map. All right, guys, I think I'm going to bring um, Fluffy in here if uh, if he or she is available. But uh, thank you guys for stopping by. Yeah, no, thanks for having us, man. We'll, uh, we'll uh, pass it on. Awesome. We'll see you. Thanks for um, stopping by and good luck in the tail. Thank you. You too. You too. You too. All right, Fluffy, I'm grabbing you right now, possibly, if I can. Let's see if it works. I thought I started my distaff. Start spinning twine into rope. Oh, I didn't have enough. Wait, really? Okay. Nope, I don't want to do that either. That's related comb. I done messed up, didn't I? What did I miss? Thorns? Wait, 
Are you there, Fluffy? Yeah, I am. Hello. Hey, what's up? So, um, how much Tale have you played? Have you played any other seasons or Tales? So I have played in a couple of other Tales, but I never really got very far. Um, the first time I played, I don't even remember what Tale number it was, but I got so addicted to it, uh, and I was still in college at the time, that I had to uninstall the game. That's the only time I've ever had that happen to a game with me. Uh, I think I've been there before, um, uninstalling because I, it's just consuming so much time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I have definitely played a little bit, um, but I haven't really gotten very far because um, I've always done solo. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to in this game is is in this tale. It's more kind of grouping up and kind of seeing what the group's needs are and that sort of thing. That's that's really the way to go. Especially if you want to, if you want to last a lot longer, if if you're going solo, it can it can be so easy to get caught up in all the different things to do, and it can burn you out. And if you're if you're working with other people, that that can kind of help alleviate that, you know. Sure, absolutely, and not having to do everything yourself too. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, working hard to get a new tech. To build something so you can make something to get a new tech etc etc you got people working together if someone else can specialize in that tech yeah it's it's a lot easier that way it's so tempting to go solo i think but i don't know i definitely enjoy the game when you when you work together with other people oh for sure uh do you have any I, i've been kind of watching the stream and half listening do you have any plans on what you're doing i'm not going to play till 10. <laughs> I don't I, I don't think I want to stick around. It's 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 very it consumes a lot of time and energy from me and and I don't think I'm gonna stick around. I, I might hop in a little bit here and there. Oh I do still have I made a mistake and tore down my stuff before I I was finished using it. So I'm back to rebuilding things. Oops. <laughs> Are there any kind of specialties though, perhaps? Wine, beer making, cooking? Like yeah, wine, that... wine, beer making, cooking, that, that sort of interests me, so um, probably going to go that way. Those seem to be favorites, that's for sure. I never dived too deep into beer. I've done a little bit, but definitely definitely did a lot of wine making. It's, it's pretty nifty. I played a little bit uh, in Tail 9 just kind of experiencing the end of it and kind of refreshing myself on things and uh also found cheese making and, and that looks kind of interesting um just because of all of the different bonuses that you can get with food um, and that's that's interesting to me yeah i never got into cheese making either um i got briefly into ranching but i didn't stick around long enough to cheese was just being a thing when i when i stopped playing i think if i remember correctly I need more boards. Oh my god. It's gonna but take it... a bit to to the real interesting stuff. Um, but that's that's part of the fun. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fun to play with buffs and, and like you said, cheese is all about buffs. Absolutely. I'm uh I'm I'm in Egypt now, so I'm kinda going back and forth from the map and trying to figure out where I want to go and that sort of thing. I spawned a long way away from where I wanted to be, so. Good God. What, um, what faction did you choose? Kutch. Yeah. Is that where you were until nine? Yeah. Yeah. And I like the area. I did, um, Hiskos before, um, a long time ago, just because I like being in the middle of the map. But, um, I, I, when I was playing around uh, with Kush on the last tail, uh, I found some places that I like for home and just kind of called out to me again. So, yeah, that's where that's where it was um, last tail as well. Um, I actually was far away from your home base. What's that? I was not too far away from your old base. Oh yeah. 
Um, I was, yeah, I wasn't too far from the, um, what's it called? The, yes, oh. Val Valley of the Kings, I guess. Or Valley was of the it, Queens. Oh, yeah, Valley of the Queens, that's what it was. That's right. I'm at some minor right now, chat, sorry. Feeling nauseous. Let's see, bricks. Oh, I need more bricks. Struggling trying to figure out what I need to get this stuff done. Yes, that is always a challenge. And then the other challenge early in the tale is not to overbuild before you have your storage chests. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I almost got into a problem uh, on the tutorial island that uh, almost had too many bricks. Yeah, I think I did that last hill. I did exactly that. I think it was bricks, too, that, that got me. But yeah, this is also tail I've ever been at the beginning of the tail so I've always come in mid to late tail so it's gonna be interesting to oh. see how everything starts from the beginning it's the best it really is it, it and it, you always see people who came in mid tail it's super excited to be able to start you know because you see all this stuff that's been built up and and you're you know you kind of wonder how, how it got there and when the next tail starts you're you get to be a part of that process and I don't know, it's really cool, it's really refreshing. I've always loved it. I think a lot of people do. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because there's uh, Tale in the Desert can be a very overwhelming game to a new player. Um and it's a little less overwhelming, I would imagine, from the beginning. Right. Yep. 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 Absolutely. It's it, it's a hard game for new players in general, for sure. Um, but if you're there with the like the flow, with the tide at the start, you feel a, you feel a stronger part of the community. I think. I think a lot of people do. Plus, it's also the most active, right? There's the most people playing. So yeah. that helps. Yeah, it's always more fun when there are other people around and doing things and walking past your camp and saying hi and that sort of thing as opposed to it being dead. <laughs> right. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Fluffy, I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, good luck in, in Tale 10. No problem. Thank you. Um, hope you enjoy uh, playing it for whatever time you do play. <laughs> uh, and I will keep an eye on your stream for sure. All right. I'll see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, chat. We're almost done there. I'm starting to feel pretty sick. I might call it soon. I think... Um, do I have the bricks now? Hold on. All right, I can get my comb up. I need that. So my issue is I, I started to turn down my stuff before I actually built the cart. And I need to process some more flax before I can continue on. So if you guys are, are new to this, the game is free to try. So there we go. Oh, that's right. We get straw out of that. Did I not take it? What happened? Oh, there it goes. So you get 24 hours of in-game time for free. That's in-game time. Oh, I'm getting lag or something. Oh, am I? Is it lag or is it an endurance check? I don't know. It might be an endurance check. I thought endurance checks would come up in chat, though. Or failed endurance checks. Oh, right up here. There it is. Was that there before and I just didn't see it? It may have been. 
Oh, it's this button here. You have to hover over it. Okay, so that's new and different. I gotcha. This is not a casual game. It is and it isn't. It can be very casual. I mean, there's a lot of hardcore stuff going on in here that you can focus on, but there's, um, I, I played it and a lot of people play it very casually. You can log in, do some stuff, log out. You can chill. I used to watch um, movies and TV shows while I played or streams. So you can watch a lot of streams while you just chill and, and do stuff in here. Um, it can be casual and it can be hardcore if you wanted to as well. Um, I need to make rope, right? Wait, did I not? I thought I got twine from this. How much twine do I have? I'm not sure what just happened, but it, it says I don't have the twine on me. Oh. There we go. That was the problem. Scientists at the University of House have been instructed to commission investigation into guilds in Cush by House Cush. They will report back on their progress in due course and any further requirements individual laboratories may have. Oh. So this is this is somewhat new. The laboratories is new. We don't know exactly how they work. I guess people will be finding out soon. Still a lot of people on the island. I'm playing some more boards. Yeah, exclamation point IT ITD in chat. If you want to get the download, the game works on PC, Mac, and Linux and free to play for 24 hours. If you could bring a friend, I think it's more fun to discover the game with a friend. The community is often very helpful. There's lots of nice people in this community. It's not toxic generally. Um, they are all adults and they do have their differences. And at times, at times, that can get a little toxic but it's a minority generally this game has a lot of nice and helpful people so if you're new and fresh don't be afraid give it a shot right now i'm spinning toe spinning toe into twine which i can then turn into rope which i'm going to need for the, what else do i need for the cart um, I need one more rope and I need two more boards. Give me one second, chat. Oh. Do I not have sleep blades? I guess I don't. Get one of those made. There we go. I think I'll have one more person joining me for an interview. I think. Apophis, who's one of the devs, he messaged me. I hollered back at him. How you been, Thorn? It's nice to see you stopping by. Don't push yourself too much. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 
it's true. I got my um, I got my first sh vaccine shot the other day, and um, I expected a reaction to it because of my immune issues, and that's exactly what I got. I think I think a lot of people I don't know exactly what triggers reactions to it. But um yeah. And it's the first shot. I'm not looking forward to the second one. But I feel like um small price to pay to get um protection from the COVID, right? Need another play already. I'm surprised I got basically nothing from Pfizer. Other than a sore arm? Yeah, that's what I got, Pfizer. Yeah, the sore arm, there was a lot more sore than I expected. Um, it's feeling it's feeling not bad today though. It's still a little sore, but um and when did I get the shot? Was it Wednesday? I don't remember. It was pretty sore. Second shot, you got a little bit of fatigue. Yeah, I got a lot of that. The I got a, I got a lot of nausea from it. Tegan nausea. First jab, I had almost no side effects. Second, I had fever and chills for about the twelfth day. Oh my god, man, I don't like chills. Screw that. I hope I'll I'll stick with the fatigue. I'm used to fatigue. I don't want chills. Ugh. No, thank you. Yeah, we're going to have Apophis hop in here real quick. Three days later, your arm stopped hurting completely. I think that's what I'm on. I think I'm, I think I'm on day three now, and it's not gone completely, but it does hurt a lot less today than it did yesterday. Pretty cool to have Apophis on stream. Yeah. Hello. Greetings. Hey, what's going on, Apophis? Nah, well, I would say not much, but uh, that would be a lie. <laughs> All right, so for those that are new, because um, I don't stream all that often, what do you do for a Tale in the Desert? My name is Apophis. I am one of the lead developers of a Tale in the Desert. I have been associated and working on the game since 2000, um, basically Wait, off and 2000? on. 2000? Yes, over 20 years. So that is nuts. That was that was like alpha, like pre yes. pre tail one alpha. Yes. God, that's when I started playing. Was around that time, two thousand. Yeah. So back in the day, um, I was a player um, and uh, basically an alpha beta tester. That was the time that uh, the server would come up for weekend sessions. So uh, we would plan out exactly what we would do with our 48 to 72 hours and try to push technology as far as we could. Um, it was a pretty crazy time. I remember that. And that was pretty much like almost all like in the Valley of Kings, right? It was up right. there. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was when the entire map was just the upper Nile Delta and that was it. Right. And I think that's why I'm so fond of that area because that's that's all it was at first. Yeah, absolutely. What was the what was the deal with the the character and the person's name causing issues? Oh, that. Okay, so the issue was that the it, it's so the character with the umlaut is an eight bit character, um, and some of the parts of the game, specifically the. Uh, um, the banners uh, the, the, with players' names were not um, did not handle 8-bit characters very well. And so what happened was 
his name was Schrodinger, and he had the umlaut on the O. And so when he would sh log in and show up, everyone who saw his banner pop up for just a moment would crash, including him. <laughs> so he kept trying to log in, and every time he logged in, everyone around him in visible range would crash. And so that just kept cycling over and over again. Luckily, he was on Discord. I was able to talk to him and tell him, please don't log in. And then we went ahead and changed his name, removed the umlaut out of his name. And then we went through and we put some changes into the, uh, the website and also into the client. There should be a new client actually available right now or very soon that fixes some of these issues. And um, hopefully, uh, because we actually found out through this audit that uh, the umlaut is actually supported, you know, the extended characters are supported in almost every other part of the code. It's just in the names in the banners that they are that they are a problem. So we're looking at trying to fix that. And if we can fix that, then we may actually be able to support these extended characters throughout everything in the game. It's so crazy how something so small <laughs> How did you guys even discover that was causing it? Um, because we saw that the moment the person who logged, the moment the person logged in, um, like everyone around them crashed because we were looking at uh, logs of, of people logging in. And then we noticed that the umlaut was there. And, and so nobody has, the funny thing about this is that for the last three years, this possible bug has existed. No one has made a character with an extended with character with a, an extended character in their name uh, for that entire time. Not a single person. So this is a bug that's basically slept for three years. And it appears on launch day. Of course. That's how this works, right? <laughs> that's a deal in the desert. Yep. That's hilarious. Oh my god. So um, how much, like, at this point, do you, do you get to play, like, enjoy a tale in the desert? Or... Are we talking just all dev stuff? Um, these days, I don't have time for much other than all dev stuff. But um, in Tale 8 and in Tale 9, both, I created secret characters that uh, were player-only characters that do not have any access to any of the database stuff. And uh, I would play and uh, sometimes even join guilds and uh, do stuff. Um, it's difficult though because I have such an intimate knowledge of all of the underlying systems that it's, you know, it's like I, I know how all of this stuff works. That doesn't always help because there's a lot of stuff in the game that's based on hashes of, of locations and um, different things. And so you can't, even if you look at the code, you can't really know what's going on there. But I stay away from stuff like that involves uh, like crossbreeding. I stay away from that stuff. Um, my favorite stuff to do is actually uh, blacksmithing and gem cutting because I really enjoy those creative things. And I would like to get more systems in the game that are like that, that require some level of actual practice and skill to, uh, to really hone down and, and provide and create uh, objects. That's what I always liked about gems and blacksmithing, that it, it takes a skill and you're rewarded for that skill. Yeah. Um, I've never oh, been good at glass blowing them, <laughs> for oh, whatever neither, reason. Neither have I, nor blacksmithing. I have been good at gem cutting at one point, but um, that was like in, that was many tales ago. I, I didn't, it wasn't very good last, was it last tale or tale eight? I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, you, you get you you know a little bit what's going on behind the curtains. I feel that. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I tried to stay away from that stuff. I, I really like Irving, like just running out in the desert and collecting herbs because it's like, uh, you know, it, you never know what you're going to find over the horizon, right? So I I think that system is really good too. Yeah, I that's so that was one thing that that I really enjoyed when I first started A Tale in the Desert a long time ago was all the running in the middle of the desert looking for things like um, cicadas and whatnot and the Bedouin stuff. And you could kind of like overlap a lot of that and, and, and do it all at the same time. And I don't know, there was a, a weird piece 
and running in the middle of the desert, even if it's just like flat sand. Yeah, know. yeah. And I'm I'm hoping that as as time goes on, we can add more and more interesting things for people to find in the desert. Um, you know, the people who are the the ex you know, it's like they, they say there's you know if you go back to uh, the original stuff about the four types of people um, who play these games. You know, the explorer is one of the the main idea, main types of people who play these games. Um, the the PVP or the attacker it goes by different names. Those people are not as well served in these games. But even so, um, those people, you know, with the tests are even served a bit. So yeah, we I think we cater to all four types, but. I do want to expand more of the exploration aspect because people really like to go out in the desert and find new things. Sure do. And as far as PvP goes, um, I heard Conflict is making a little bit of a return. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're reintroducing Conflict, but we're not reintroducing it as a full, you know, uh, a whole like tests and everything. We, we had a lot of problems uh, when we had conflict uh, in that, uh, you know, the, the main issue with conflict was that people would game the tests. You know, they would talk to each other and they'd say, okay, well, you throw this game and, and I'll throw this game. And they would arrange things just so that they would even have a schedule of who would win these events and who would win those events. And that really goes in the face of the whole conflict idea and that's not really something you can fix um you can't you can't tell people i mean we did try we said hey don't don't uh, don't fix these games but people would just hide it better you know it's right. uh, so i i don't feel like it, that that basically means that they don't make good tests um I mean, we already have it set up. I mean, people have already got it set up, like, with obelisk. People make queues, and they set up, okay, well, it's now your turn to build your obelisk of X size, and then it'll be that person's turn to build obelisk. And, you know, it's like, I would I like it to be a little bit more cutthroat? Well, yeah, of course I would. But, you know, if that's the way they want to address that, then I think that that's its own game in a way because there's always people who break cues and all that other stuff but the problem is that conflict is fundamentally broken in the idea of trying to make for, as tests you know but and it, I, and it, it wasn't always that way either i remember conflict in early tales to be cutthroat oh yeah and i remember events for for many conflict games, tug events were cutthroat. You know, yes. there was a prize for winning it, and I remember joining everyone that I could, and it's like, I want to win this. I, yeah. we, I don't remember anybody gaming those systems. Yeah, I mean, I think at first it was like that, and then as time went on, and and also it's it's also the other the other idea of the, the tale itself, right? Um... There's a lot of enthusiasm for stuff at the very beginning. People want to hit those early levels and things like that. So I think that there's less collusion at the very beginning of a tale than there is at the end of the tale, you know, where... Oh, people want to get a leg up on others. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's it's one of those as well. Um, it, it's there, The enthusiasm wanes as the tale goes on. So you get a balance for it swapping how it is in the beginning to how it is at the end. Yeah. That sounds and fun. like it's yeah, I mean it's it's like I said, it's it's hard to balance that way. One of the ways that we're looking to balance some of that end tail fatigue is by having shorter tellings. Yeah, uh, you you probably noticed that this one is only scheduled to go for one year. Is that is that um Perhaps the plan going forward is maybe 12 month tales. I think that that's what we're going to try. Um, but uh, the, just like everything else in this game and how everything else for the last 20 years has been, it's all an experiment. We're going to throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And uh, if uh, stuff works well, then we'll keep using it. And if it, we find out that it doesn't work, then we'll get rid of it. I think that 
you know, that's part of why we have longevity because the the meta constantly changes. There's new stuff, things change. It's it's part of the soul of the game. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. You know, it's like we I, we wouldn't have all these players if they logged back in to a new telling and everything was exactly the same. You know, why would you want to just repeat the same thing over again? Yeah, makes sense. I agree. Totally. Oh, my God. I made a mistake and tore down all my stuff before I built my cart. <laughs> and I should know better. It's hilarious. I mean, to be honest, and this is something that it seems like a lot of players miss, you are expected to tear down some of that stuff uh, before you build your cart because um, you get materials back that you can use to build your cart. A lot of people just leave their small distaff built there and leave those materials and half of the materials that you can use to build your cart are actually in that small distaff that's absolutely true I, did i put that in my last welcome island video i wonder i think i, I don't did. know we even changed the uh, the to do list as uh, the last option or one of the options is specifically to tear down your small distaff and but we we flag as an optional thing but still people people skip over it and they leave it and the resources just stay there and that can go directly to building their compound just moments later, really. Right. Yeah. So the 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 server so far seems to be handling things just fine. We have lots of people here. It's so nice seeing all the names. Po oh, I see Schrodinger. It's so nice seeing all <laughs> the names pop up. Yeah, I I love this. This is my favorite part of the telling where everybody logs into the game and everybody's on Welcome Island and everybody's struggling to uh, to try to get off Welcome Island as soon as possible. And the, and the land rush. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it's the land rush is also something that I don't, I feel is not as cutthroat as it used to be. I remember yeah. trying to get, to, to the, get the spot that you want during the testing or whatever and getting there as fast as possible before somebody else does. Yeah, I mean, we've spent a lot of time, the world builders have spent a lot of time trying to create more and more um, so-called good spots um, in the world for uh, single players, uh, small guilds, large guilds to settle down uh, to. And also the other thing is that you know, a lot of the people who are playing, you know, I the majority of the people who are playing, this is not the first time they've played. You know, they know where they want to go generally, or they, they scouted it out the tail before, or, or something like that. They know exactly where they want to go. They know that nobody else has really gotten that spot. And so there's not really a lot of people running into each other. And, and for that matter, Egypt's a big place. You know, it's massive <laughs> to yeah. say the least. How long does it take to get from the top to the bottom? Do we know the the running time without um, buffs? The last time we tested this, it was over eight hours. I would have expected more, actually. Wow. Um, but keep in mind that's really old data. Um, I don't. I mean, I have not actually tried to do it. Uh any time recently and of course over the years the size of the map has changed you know we've we've made it wider we made it longer you know uh it's changed probably six or seven times so i did not know that i i know that w was it when they when w was it bauxite that that widened it a little or yeah when was that? yeah we added bauxite and gypsum uh to yeah. the side of the map and then that expanded it and then we had a whole lot of nothing that we basically had to fill in. And I, I really feel like we're still filling that in to some extent. The, the homesteads, um, I thought was a really nice addition to the game. Yes. Um, oh, was it tail eight or tail nine that those came in? Uh, we started doing a few of them in tail eight. Um, and then they've expanded every single telling. Um, that's that's more like what I was saying about the the nice places for people to kind of set up, um, because you know it, there there's there was a perception I think in earlier tellings where 
there were only a few good places, so-called good places to go. And um, there was a rush for those places every single time. Well, the more good places there are, then the, le the more people are spread out, and the more people feel more comfortable in their spots, that they don't have to blow their uh, camp deco or whatever in uh, for to just to make it comfortable. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And um, I remember when I was searching, was it Tail 9? I think it was. There were a lot of places to choose from. There were so many homesteads. Um, and I don't know, it was it was a really fun thing to explore on, on where you could build. Like you said, you didn't feel like you had to rush for the prime spots. There were a lot of prime spots with lots of wood, lots of nice foliage, a pretty area that, that you think that you'd want to stick around in for a full tail. And you're right, I think it did alleviate, alleviate a lot of that. Yeah, absolutely. I even, I went as far as, what was it? Sop That Sky was the name of my homestead. I love the fact that they named them too. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I went crazy with it. I made a postcard, sent the postcard out to a bunch of people. Greetings from Sop That Sky. I had the whole, <laughs> whole thing going with the homestead. I don't know. I liked it. It was a neat addition. That's very cool. I, I always like to like to hear when when people take the stuff that we create and, and make it even more. So. Totally, totally. I don't think I'm personally going to stick around for tail 10. I would love to, but um, I'm really bad at regulating my time with the game. I get caught up <laughs> wanting to do so many different things and I don't know. It's hard for me. I don't have a lot of um, regulation, self-regulation going on. Well, I mean, you can always do what uh, some of the older players did. Right? I, you remember Zombo? Yes. Yeah. So, Zombo, um, he was uh, he was a a bit of curmudgeon in the fact that he never he he always hated the whole leveling system, right? Yeah. Um, which is why one of the reasons, it, based on not just his opinion but many other people's opinion, we got rid of the levels because I I honestly personally never liked the levels um, because. I felt like they took away from some of the unique flavor of the game. It, it put us in the same box as a lot of other games. So that's why, you know, when we got rid of the levels, I still didn't, I felt like there was still something missing. And then that's why I created the specialization system, um, which I think is, uh, I, I'm very happy with that. And it's been improved quite a bit, this telling. There's no more to-dos. Every spec has t talents in every spot. And, everything else like that so um and uh, but getting back to zombo his focus was he did blacksmithing he only did blacksmithing he traded for anything that he needed with blacksmithing and maybe did some smelting on the side but he just focused on that one thing and traded and I think that that's, I wish more people would do that sort of thing, because I think that you can get, there's just so much stuff in the game that it's really easy to get caught up in trying to do it all when you're not supposed to do it all. You're supposed to try to focus on several things that you enjoy and trade or work with others, you know, create a guild where you focus on this stuff and these other people focus on this stuff and work together or trade for the resources you need. And I, I feel like people kind of get away from that sometimes and try to to do everything. Uh, absolutely. I'm guilty as charged for sure. <laughs> but it's um, part of it is is like, like we talked earlier, maybe wanting to be the first person to do something, getting a leg up, getting the first one to have access to something valuable. But on the other hand, there's just so many interesting things to do that, yeah. you know, I, I would love to do blacksmithing, even though I'm not good at it. I'd like to get good at it. I'd like to do wine. I'd like to do cooking or or beer. And then it starts adding up and you're like, oh, you got to prioritize. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And without that self-regulation, yeah. you can hurt yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's difficult. It's it really is difficult. Um, you can you can completely drown in just a couple of systems. Like if for some reason you decide, oh, I, I want to start growing vegetables. 
And then you say, well, what about crossbreeding? Just crossbreeding, just by itself, the, how deep that system is, is so ridiculous that you can drown in that and never get out. I mean, just talk to Tetra or, or any of the other people that are, you know, the big, pe the, the people who are very, very deep into crossbreeding. Um, you know, they, they get into that stuff and they focus on it so heavily. And then they're the ones that create the stuff for the rest of the group. And we've been trying to do improvements of those systems as well. You know, um, we've got uh, new stuff as far as the naturalist specialization. That's new for this telling. That um, makes uh, some of the crossbreeding stuff a little bit less painful. Um, makes uh, nuts essence cheaper in a variety of ways. And um, so we're trying, we're trying to make it easier for those types of people because I know that crossbreeding, for instance, is a really difficult thing to go down. Yeah, and I've been with this game for so long, and I've dabbled in so many other things, but I've never gotten into crossbreeding because it always seemed very complicated or difficult, or maybe just I don't know. It felt like maybe I was going to add too much to my plates. Maybe that's <laughs> where I did draw the line. Was like. Well, this seems interesting, but I don't know if I can handle that. Yeah, yeah, I I can totally understand. Um, even even though I know all of the stuff that goes behind the crossbreeding, I have personally absolutely avoided crossbreeding. Um, even if I didn't know the stuff behind it, I I just personally uh, completely avoided it because it's it's so tough and it's it is it can be really rewarding, but it takes a lot of time to get there. So. That's what I like about that, this game. That there's so many different complicated systems that you can jump into and pour yourself into. Like wine, I really enjoyed wine and many previous tales. And I know some others may have been a little scared to get into wine, but yeah. you know. Well, we've we've also um, I know. Let's see. We had connoisseur last telling, um, which I don't think actually ever rolled out. Um, I. I apologize. I I, I, I kind of dropped out a little bit last telling. I had I had some health issues and a lot of stuff going on. So, but um, this telling instead of having connoisseur, which was half implemented, we've uh, broken them out into vintner and uh, brewmaster. So there's specific specializations that are focused in each of the types of uh, brew, and um, I think that people will really like some of the changes that we've got there. I took suggestions from everyone and uh, figured out what was um, I could uh, implement and uh, because there were some suggestions for for beer and wine that were simply too complex I, I could not implement them without screwing up the system because even under the hood beer and wine are just they're just amazingly deep and uh, you know you don't you don't just stick a wrench into uh, complex, beautiful clockwork like that. You, you <laughs> try to uh, <laughs> massage it on the edges. So I did what I could to try to alleviate some of the stuff. For instance, uh, the uh, the capstone for Vintner allows you to pour more. Uh, you get more wine out of bottles and. Um, the uh, the same with uh, brewmaster. Um, you can brew um, uh, kegs of beer that actually yield more um, more glasses, so um, you'll be able to drink. More people can drink, basically. And that kind of system, I, it sounds like it could be friendlier. The the specialization system, especially the way it's it's laid out. I didn't. Uh, which button was it? Was it this one? Nope. Nope. That's not it. It seems like it might be friendlier for new players seeing exactly what they can specialize in and what it leads to. Yeah. And it's definitely better this telling than it was last telling because now it's all graphical. Yep, that definitely helps. So without 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 spoilers, um, hmm. what are you most excited for for Tail 10? I think I am currently most excited by the uh, what when basically the the new research system um the uh which people are just now starting to see 
what is happening as far as research goes. And, yep. um, you know, Kush and, uh, let's see, wait a second. Kush and Meshwesh both have uh, opened up their guild research, have started their guild research. And um, they, uh, I, you know, it's like, I'm sure people noticed that the research was only a tenth of what it used to be. So I don't know if people are, are making the connection that, uh, you know, that the research is very different than it was. And honestly, this, re this type of research that is going on is a type of research that I have been pushing for for a very long time. Um, in that I don't want to... Uh, I, I, basically, it's like, uh, I, I feel like the old research system that valued just ridiculous amounts of, you know, drop 100,000 bricks into this box and that'll give you this stuff. I, I hate that stuff. And <laughs> I really want to, I want to move away from it. And um, I'm hoping that this is like our first step towards moving away from that paradigm. And um, I'm sure it must be tough. This this game is full of. All right, let's be real here. This game's full of boomers, right? It's full of a lot of people who've been playing it for a long time. We can be dead set in our ways sometimes. Oh yeah. But you need to you need to be willing to make changes and bring fresh ideas in to prevent the game from going stale. Yes. And research seems like a good place to. See to do that yeah um one but, of the oh, i'm sorry go ahead uh but but the thing is though that no matter what happens anything literally anything that we change in this game i can count on people complaining about it i mean absolutely count on it and you know to some extent we cater to some of those people because i mean these are the people who play the game um, and we've made it so that you can switch back to the old style a lot of times and everything else like that on some things. But, you know, at some point, you have to try to advance and make things better. You can't just use the old style. And make it more appealing for, for new players to want yes. to try the game, because the game is only going to survive if you start bringing in new players. Yes, absolutely. I mean... Ideally, you know, it's like I've been involved with this game for 20 years. I would love to be able to have this game bring in enough players so that I could make this my full-time job, for instance. You know, that would be great. Um, but, uh, you know, this is this is a hobby for me. This is a hobby for Mallard. This is a hobby for all the people who work on this game. You know, um, we, we can't... Even though we have, you know... I think we, we, we definitely got over 400 subs so far. We're probably over 500 now, um, which is great. I mean, it's great. But it, you know, it's like once you take out operating expenses and everything else like that, you know, it's, there's just not enough. So we'd love to have more people play the game. That would be great. But, you know, the only way we get there is by trying to slowly whittle at things and make more, make it, the idea is to make it more accessible for player people, new people playing the game, but not lose the soul of what makes a tale in the desert the tale in the desert. Which which definitely does not sound like an easy task. That's no. Yeah. Because everything everything we change, we're we're accused that we're we're completely destroying the game. You know, it's like factions last telling was a really good example. Um, lots and lots of people hated factions, and and we hear those people. We really do but we wanted to test it out and see if we added more conflict to the game what would would that be a positive direction and so this telling we backed all that stuff way off we don't have the hardcore factions that we had like in last telling now we have the houses which are much softer things um and and pe players will find out more stuff about how the houses work as time goes on but we we don't we're not enforcing things hardcore like we did last telling and i think that people will like that yeah um i'm i i with factions i, I kind of i get it i like them and i don't like them i'm, I'm in the middle i think yeah. i was i felt like i was last tale when um when i started i wanted to 
join a faction that was going to help me with making videos and that means access to research so my entire um that was my priority so i joined kush because they're always pretty quick to the research yeah uh, and whatnot so i made it a priority and i i do i like it um i don't know i i think it was worth trying i think it was worth trying yeah. and you've got to try new stuff like that and it's not all going to work and some of it will but it's it's i think it was worth it yeah, I mean, I still hear about the plague that I put on Egypt 15 years ago. I still hear stuff about that almost daily. <laughs> I love the plague. <laughs> I don't, It was stuff like that that helped make the game unique, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I'd be down for more of that, personally, but I don't know. Maybe some well, of us older folk wouldn't. Yeah, I think that if, if I did do a plague-like thing again, well, first of all, I'm definitely not going to do a plague after everything that happened with COVID. Um, nobody wants to see that right now. Um, but if I did do something like that, I would, I would make it so that I would, I basically guarantee that it only strikes for a very short period of time. Because I think that was the main problem with the plague was that it wasn't, it wasn't the action or the activity or anything else like that. It just dragged on too long. How long was it in there for? Well. It was planned for only two weeks. And then basically what happened was that it probably went about two plus months um, because um, the infection rates went way faster than I expected. Um, and it had a nasty effect on how people did stuff. I mean, people reacted the same way that people reacted for with COVID. Everybody <laughs> shut themselves up. You know, they would say, no, 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 you can't come on my island because I don't want to be infected with your lung spore. And, you know, so then we went through this lengthy process of coming up with treatments and then a cure for the lung spore. And um, that's that's when I introduced the the character Tessabes, um, the, the Greek guy who showed up on the beach and had his own camp. And we started going through advanced chem together. And um, that's how a lot of the advanced chemistry stuff got invented and, and brought into the game was through Tessabees. And eventually he came up with the cure um, as players would donate resources to him. So I, I liked that little mini game. I thought that that was really cool. And I thought it was a good role play experience. And I want more of that. I want more role play in there where people are running characters and, and stuff like that. And, we might see some of that stuff again this telling, um, but I want to make sure that the mistakes that we've made in the past where stuff is not finished, uh, where when it's put into the game, we, we need to make sure that we do a better job of finishing things before they're put into the game. Because I, I don't, I, I think that that just doesn't serve, it doesn't serve the game well if we put half finished things and then just try to patch it later, you know? Um, I know that's the thing we've screwed up in the past, and hopefully we'll do better with in the future. The game's always been kind of a, a Frankenstein in that huh. sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know how new players feel about it, but I've I've i grown used to stuff like that a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we can literally update the game code on the fly without rebooting the the, the client has been one of the best things that happened to the game. And honestly, it kind of makes us lazy, I think, sometimes. Because we're like, well, we'll just put this in, and then we'll go ahead and finish this last thing later, and um, you know, just do our best, because we can just patch this in whenever we want. But I, I think we just need to do a better job of putting as complete stuff as we can into the game for the first time. I remember um, really early on. I don't. I don't know when that started, but I remember when um, Teppy announced that or said that he can live patch a river, and and that just blew everyone away. Yeah, it's still something that most, if not, I mean, I don't think there there might be a couple of games that still allow that sort of thing or that that allow that stuff in, in engines, but they're very few and far between. That's too cool. All right, my car is done. I'm ready to head to Egypt. I don't know if I'm I'm going to go quite yet. I might walk around 
to know what he's going up to, but thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, no problem. I figured uh, at the very least I would uh, give you a little bit of a chat so you can uh, share that with your viewers and uh, give a little bit my perspective. So. Yep, it's been awesome. You guys uh, have done a great job with it. The, the devs have been amazing for this game for such a long time, keeping it alive and being practically on call for, for us like day in, day night. Um, it's has been greatly appreciated. Yeah, well, if we didn't love doing it, we wouldn't do it. So. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming. Yep. All right. Well, good luck in Egypt. See ya. Yep. What's up, chat? That was really cool for, of him to stop by. It was cool of Fluffy, um, of Solkun, Brad, and what was Solkun's friend's name? I don't remember. I am terrible with my memory. But anyways, um, I don't know if I'm going to choose to head to Egypt yet. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I didn't have plans to play a Tale 10. Um, a, a part of me wants to make more videos. I always want to make more videos. It's, videos for this game are hard. One thing they made easier, though. One thing they fixed. I don't know. I'm Kirby. Yes, it was I'm Kirby. So one of the difficulties in making tail videos, for those of you who, who may be interested in making them in the future, um, one of the difficulties was a tail of desert um, does not play nice with OBS um, in, in several different ways. Um, they're, I don't, they fight for resources or something. I don't know exactly. There's some kind of refresh rate issue when you do full screen, but it feels like the the new client has fixed that it appears um one of the issues and i think the reason is is because i can hook into the game now before with the old client you could not hook into the game with obs you would have to do a window capture or a display capture and it feels like that's when the refresh rate issue would happen so what would happen is when you turn the camera you get a jitteriness like almost like a rubber band but it's a jitteriness and with um with being able to hook into the game, it's gone. It is completely gone. And that is a huge relief because that was a massive issue when recording. You'd have to be care careful with your camera movement when recording. Oops, I didn't mean to hit that. And it made making videos very difficult because you'd have to plan out the camera. You'd have to take do so many different takes in order to prevent the jitter from happening. But that's completely gone, which is so nice. Other than that, the other difficulty is... Um, there's a lot to do. It's hard to prioritize what kind of videos you want to make. Um, getting a script nice and short and trying to make it as newbie-friendly as possible. And that was always my focus, is making it newbie-friendly as possible. Because I've, I've always felt more could be done to get new players interested and comfortable with the game i don't know it's it's not an easy game to to do videos on but I, I still enjoyed it i still enjoyed making them it's just a lot of effort it's a lot of work and energy that i don't really have um so i don't know it it's something i'd like to do but it's not something i can promise that i would do if you do want to play set yourself some limits write them down and stick to them yeah it's hard man right Another way to um, to consider when you're when you're making videos is that you need access to tech, and you can't really do it on your own. You need other people's help. And the best part about the game is how helpful the community is. There's a lot of people here that are willing to help. I had people last tail and tail before give me access to stuff I I was far away from, things like that. That's the best part about it. But it's still there's still a lot there. It's a lot of work to do. And I wish I had the energy to do it. Because I, I'd, I'd like to see the game survive and not just survive, but improve. And like Apophis said, graduate from being a hobby to actual um, sustainable game, right? And it's just, it doesn't seem to be an easy task for a tale in the desert. What is that noise? I don't know.
but anyways, um, it's been fun. It's been fantastic. I don't know if you guys will see me again. I'll be uh, I'll be sticking around in Discord for sure though, and chatting with people. And you may see me on tonight, tomorrow, poking around. I don't know. I I think I want to get an idea of how the research goes, because I think how the research goes would dictate where I would want to move. If it isn't as faction restricted as it was last time, I might move somewhere completely different. But if it's it's still heavily faction restricted, then I, I might I might be forced to go somewhere else. I don't know. Lots of decisions. I'll, I'll wait a day or so on that. We'll see. So thank you guys for stopping by again. Thanks for everybody for joining with me. Hold on. Oh my god. There we go. That's better. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, we'll see you soon. If you um, by the way, I do have more of those postcards, the Egypt postcards. If case you weren't here earlier, I made um postcards of a tail in the desert that I sent to all my patrons. And if you guys want one, if you join up with a patron, I'll I'll send you an Egypt postcard. Um, I love them. It was really fun to make the Egypt one. They're out there. They exist. And they're rare. There's only 25 of them in existence. But um, anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye.